so thankful that your presence is here with us, Lord, that you're so true to your word, that when we press into you, when we draw near to you, that you draw near to us. God, we just lay everything at your feet this morning because you are worthy, because there is no one who compares to you, and you are God, and you are God alone, and we love you, Jesus. We thank you that there's no other name but yours, God.
just sing this one more time. There's no one who compares. You have no rival, and you have no words Lord oh for grace to trust you more how I pray that's all of our hearts as we come here this morning that we just desire to draw closer to you that our trust would deepen in you because there's no better way to live this life than trusting in you our Creator and our Savior so for each of us I pray Lord that we will go deeper in our trust and then we will prove over and over how good your ways are how good you are may we deepen our trust and may our ways in following you strengthen and grow this very day we pray your anointing on pastor pete as he brings your word today may our hearts and our minds be wide open to receive what you our god have for us and we pray this in jesus name amen amen church so good to be with you today why don't you uh give a greeting say hello give a hug give a happy father's day to somebody nearby as you take your seats what a special day i love what uh how nick opened us up is there a better place to spend father's day or a better way to spend father's day than giving honor and glory and praise and thanks to our heavenly father so we do that today Thanks so much for being here. Yes. And uh, if today's your first time at FCF, we want to extend a special warm welcome. Really happy and excited you've chosen to spend your Sunday with us. Yeah. We'd love to know that you're with us and you can let us know by filling out our Connect card. It's either inside your program if you're in the auditorium. If you're online, and welcome to you. Uh, you can just go to our website and fill that out for us. FCFchurch.com, tap the Connect card button. So. Um, we've just got we, we have too much fun here at FCF. I think it's too much fun it can never be enough fun, right? 
This summer, we've been launching our clubs. Oh, well, wait, let me start with last Sunday. Ice Cream Sunday! Oh my goodness, so much fun. Um, we hope if you missed last Sunday, you'll join us for our next one, which is July 17th. Mark your calendars. The plan is to have a Rita's Italian ice. But the ice cream is just what kind of brings us together. It's the fellowship and the fun. It was just a wonderful time last week. So we hope that you'll join us next time on July 17th. But another way to get connected and have fun here at FCF Church is the FCF Clubs. We've launched all kinds of clubs this summer. Uh, just coming up this week, we got pickleball, we got disc golf, uh, we've got a number of other things. You can learn all about the clubs on our website, in your program today, or on the app. Let me just give a little mention. Uh, it says that the Single Moms Club is meeting today. That's wrong. I'm responsible for that wrong mistake. Uh, it's actually next Sunday, Single Moms Club, okay? But just check those out. Great way to get connected and have some fun. I read something this past week. You know, I frequently have to talk about giving when I come up here, but I read this really cool thing. It said, to make a living, you get, but to make a life, you give. And man, that just really hit me as I read that. You know, we're all about making a living, right? We gotta make a living, we gotta pay our bills, gotta save for the future, for retirement. We wanna get stuff, you know? That's like the me mode, the survival mode, take care of me, and we get to do that. But if we want to make a life, if we want to have impact, if we want to be a blessing the way that the Lord wants to be a, us to be a blessing, then it's all about giving instead of about getting. And, and, you know, God is the greatest giver in all the universe. And he says, I want you to be like me, a giver, have impact, make a life not just the living. So I hope that uh, speaks to each one of our hearts today. The way it did to me is I read it this week, and we can give and make a life for ourselves, have impact in this world as we give to God's good work, amazing and beautiful work that happens in and through his church. And you can do that on our website, on the app, or utilizing those offering boxes as you leave today. Now, I didn't forget, happy Father's Day. Dads, thank you so much for your beautiful expression of God's love to us that you, you provide day in and day out in our lives. We thank you so much. We honor you today. And for anyone who has yet to get a Father's Day gift and you're thinking, oh, darn, what do I get, Dad? We'll just head over to the FCF store after church today. I think these are going to go fast. We've got some new FCF hats, so we hope you'll take advantage of that. And uh, as we get ready for Pastor Pete to bring God's message to us today. Pastor Randy's on vacation, a much deserved vacation and time of rest. So the Lord's gonna speak through Pastor Pete today. But again, let's um, honor our dads one more time with this video. When you're a dad, you have to play a lot of roles. Hey, 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 don't eat that. Don't tap on the brain. Okay, oh, All right. Oh, you're good. Oh. Take, take a left, turn left, turn left, turn left. When a man loves a woman, he... Honey! All righty, sweetie. This time I want you to concentrate and focus on the ball. You got this. Oh! Sweetie, your date's here. Two weeks, no TV, no phone. This is my door in my house. I told you I can slam it. You get the door back when I say you get the door back. I told you before. Don't you slam the door in my house. I told you. Hey, knock it off. Don't let me turn this car around. I'll do it. What are you wearing? No, I, you're not going anywhere looking like that. Go on back upstairs and put some clothes on. No! Oh! Do, 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 do. Got it. Open the door, get the door, get the door, get the door, get the door, open the door, open the door, sweetie, open. Bye. And Jesus steps in and stops everybody before they start throwing the rocks. And he says, let he who's without sin throw the first stone. You do all of this knowing that one day you will get fired because we all get fired. But by the grace of God, you might get hired back to be a consultant. <laughs> hey, sweetie. What's up?
Happy Father's Day. Why don't, you, why don't you go ahead? You can turn me up a little bit there, Dan. Go crank me up. Why don't you turn towards whoever's on your left and right? If there's a father, then look him right in the eyes and say, Happy Father's Day. I'm glad you're here today. If you happen to be married to said person, feel free to give him a big old wet one. We love that. That's our favorite. Just lay it on us. It's beautiful. If you're with us for the first time, my name is Pete, and I have the privilege of serving here as the associate pastor, and I'm thrilled to bring the word this morning and share what God has placed on my heart. But we just finished a fantastic series called Paradoxes of Life. Did you love that series? Wasn't that series fantastic? If you're joining us for the first time, I encourage you to go ahead, jump back, and check out that series. We have an incredibly gifted communicator, man, that loves the Lord, and it is good for him to get some time away. Amen? Amen. Amen. We all need rest. So, did you enjoy the bacon? Come on. <laughs> I had about 17 people ask me if that was my idea. No, it was not my idea. I did not decide I wanted bacon on Father's Day. But can we actually thank our, we have a, a hospitality team that does an incredible job. Miss Christine Derling gives oversight to that. Can you just thank that team? Yeah, yeah. They'll be, they'll be giving it away again on your way out, so you can go ahead and snag that. I have a TV that's out over here, gentlemen, just so you know. Only got one side going here. But I, I was thinking about this, and I don't know if there's ever been a time in history where there's just been so much universal unity. Just that every, everybody's just getting along. <laughs> Broad consensus. Um, we're all playing with the same cards. All seeing the same things. No friction. Nice. Never any friction. There's like a void where there should be friction. Pick a topic. Please. Don't pick a topic. <laughs> Let's get back to reality. Have, have we ever been more fractured relationally? Has there ever been a void of community like we're experiencing now? And the question I would ask you this morning is why, why is that? Why are our communities so broken? We're going to start this morning in Genesis. I'm going to give you a little overview of creation. Stay with me. And I'm, I grew up in a church where you talk back to the pastor. Anybody else grow up in a church like that? Okay, yeah. You, I say something. You, pastor Rain does it too. So let's look here. Day one, a little overview. He separated the light from the darkness. Genesis 1-4. And God saw that the light was, what's it say? Good. Oh, y'all are on fire this morning. Okay, dads. Day two, separated the waters of heaven and earth and called it sky. Day three, called the dry ground land and the water sea. One ten, God saw that it was? Good. Stay with me. And God saw that it was? Good. That was verse 12. Day four, light from darkness. And God saw that it was? Good. Verse 18. Day five, he created the fish of the sea, birds of the air. One twenty-one, And God saw that it was? Good. You're losing a little energy. Come on, keep it up. You're with me. <laughs> Day six, he creates the animals. 125, God saw that it was good. There it is. And then he makes humanity. What I'm getting at here with this is that God created everything. I, I, I could say this another way and say that everything exists in relationship to God. Everything exists in relationship to God. To God. In Genesis 2, we get a little bit more clarity around the creation of humanity. Let's look here. 2.15. It says, So the Lord God took man and settled him in the Garden of Eden. Now the Lord God said, wait for it. We've just been through this story where God over and over again, the creator of the universe says, and it was good, and it was good. This beautiful poetic language, not in meter, but in repetition and parallelism. It's good. Evening passed and morning came, and it was what does God say? Verse 18. Now the Lord God said, it is for man to be alone. 
Now, some attribute this need for community to the fact that we're broken and we're flawed, but you're missing something here. This is before trust has been broken. There's, there's not this sin in the world, this friction between God and man. No, this is a perfect, beautiful garden. And even in our purest of state, untarnished, it is not good for man to be alone. We were created for community. So God makes Eve from his rib. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. God looks down on the first beautiful community that he's made. Everything, Adam and Eve and all the creation. This is what he says. Then God looked over all that he's made and he said it was, what is it? Very good. Very good. This isn't me saying it's very good. This isn't Pastor Randy saying it's very good. This is the most powerful being in the entire universe, looking down at the first most pure and beautiful community. And he says it's very good. But somehow, we chose to do this our way. We stepped out of God's perfect plan. If you're taking notes this morning, it's actually, I put the outline in your program this morning. The title of my message is, It's Not Good, and then you'll see five dashes underneath that. It's not good for man to be alone. It's not good for us to be alone. We were created for community. I, I decided a couple days ago that I'm going to start a new segment in my teaching. It's called this. You ready? You're going to love this. Pastor Randy digged it. Pastor Kim liked it too. It's, it's called this. It sounds spiritual, but it's not biblical. Anybody ever hear something? You're like, ooh, that sounds so spiritual. But you're like, wait a minute. Where is that in Scripture? I've never seen that. Now, I heard this one a couple of weeks ago. You ready? I don't need a church community. I can study the Bible for myself. This, my friend, is evidence that you cannot study the Bible for yourself. <laughs> so a man named John Wesley, who's one of Pastor Randy's heroes in the faith, founded the Methodist movement, incredible, incredible pastor and evangelist. And he says this, scriptures know nothing of solitary religion. The, the Peach a Lot transla translation, the Bible does not teach lone Christianity. It doesn't exist. We were created for community. Now, we've just come through a season like hasn't happened in several hundred years. We were isolated. We were alone. We were by ourselves. We were very, very separate from Christian community isolated. And you know for the next 15 years, psychologists and sociologists will study the implications of the COVID-19 lockdown and what it did to us relationally. But as many of you already know, the studies are in. Alcoholism, depression, anxiety, pornography, suicide, all, all of these evil things grew in this environment. Why? Because we're not supposed to be alone. We were created to live in community. This was how God wired us. It's not good for man to be alone. There was a phrase that circled amongst church leadership, probably started maybe 10 years ago, and it was, uh, healthy things grow. They would say it over and over again. Healthy things grow and healthy churches grow and, and healthy. And, and I would just, I understand the premise of what they were trying to get at with that. But he, here's what I'm just going to tell you. I just disagree with it. Respectfully, as a young guy, obviously I disagree with it. Because cancer grows. Is cancer healthy? No, I, I think things grow in the environment that we create for them. Mold grows on my bread if I don't eat it fast enough. I, I don't like that. That's not good. But it's growing. And what we saw in isolation during COVID is that in consistent isolation, evil things grow. Why? Because sociologists discovered what God told us thousands of years ago. It's not good for man to be alone. I started this morning with a question. Why is our community so broken? Why are we so fractured? 
That's also in your notes. You can check that out. I'm going to look at three specific reasons why this takes place. But before we get there, we're going to jump back to Genesis. Genesis 2 says, And the Lord God commanded the man, You are, what's it say? Free. Free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God tells him you're free. You can, you can do whatever you want. Just follow my way. Just do this my way. And what happens is a few verses later, Satan comes into the garden and he says this. Did God really say? Did he, did he really say you couldn't do that? You know, the, the devil didn't have to convince us to lie, cheat, steal, steal, kill. None of that had to take place. All he had to do was get us to question God, to doubt God, and then to break trust with God. Did he really say? The sad part is we know how this story plays out. Eve breaks trust with God. And we see the implications of this. And if you think about how this affected us, Genesis 2.25 says at one point they were naked and felt no shame. And this isn't a reference just to sexuality. This is a reference to authentic, pure community. This is, this is who I am. But what happens when they broke trust with God? What was the first thing they did? Scripture says they realized that they were naked and so they covered. What did they say? I can't let you see who I really am. Come on, I, I, I'm, I'm going to hide from you. I'm going to cover. Did God really say? So we cover. And here's the deal. God is the most beautiful, loving, sacrificial, compassionate being in the entire universe. The most beautiful being that ever will exist. And we didn't trust him. And listen, if we can't trust God and we couldn't trust God, then we certainly couldn't trust each other. That's what happened. I'll say it this way. This is also in your notes. Our vertical connection has a horizontal reflection. If you're taking notes, you can write that in your program. Our vertical connection had a horizontal reflection. When we broke relationship with God, all of a sudden, every other relationship unraveled. <laughs> this isn't a problem. Come on. This is the problem of all problems. Why? Because everything exists in relationship to God. So when our relationship with him unraveled, everything else fell apart. And we've been fighting to restore community with each other ever since. I'll take it one step further. The farther our communities and our societies get from God, the more broken and fractured our community and society will become. It's not a mystery. But when we get, begin to restore relationship with him, come on, we, we're able to restore relationship with each other. So you're probably asking me, it sounds like this is gonna be a lot of work. Like you've, you've made it clear, like we are very, very broken people, and we are. We are very broken people. But what I would tell you is that fighting for community is worth it. The juice is worth the squeeze this morning. So here's the question. Are you willing to fight for community? I'm going to give you three, three reasons. I asked you earlier, why is community so essential? We're going to look at three reasons that are in your notes. First reason is this. Community fosters maturity. Community fosters maturity. Well, how does it do that? Community fosters maturity through accountability. So let me ask you this. Um, how many of you have ever not wanted to come to church on a Sunday morning? Just go ahead and throw your hand up. Don't act so holy. I've not wanted to come to church, and I was the one preaching. So go ahead. And, you didn't want to come to church on a Sunday. But we come because of accountability we find within community. 
I went to church when I was a kid because my dad said, if you don't go to church, I will slap you. So I'm like, God, I believe God's calling me to church this morning. <laughs> Community fosters maturity through accountability. Let's look at this passage. Hebrews 10, 24 says, and let us consider how we may, what's this word? Spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Not giving up the meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. This is like my message right here. Like, like if, if I could sum it up, we got to be together. We got to push each other because we need to be together. Th th this is it. This word spur is translated a couple of different ways. It's translated as encourage or provoke, most commonly as provoke. I mean, you think about what that means. Like we're supposed to push each other, push each other, spur one another on. It's another verse I love. Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Man, that's a great verse. It looks awesome on a t-shirt, doesn't it? <laughs> Hashtag ISI. Hashtag Father's Day truth. Like it's just... But have you really thought about what that looks like or what that is? Iron, sharpening iron. I mean, we have this level of accountability that we get from people that are close to us and love us. But what about those people that we're with that maybe we we're not as close with? Does anyone know what an EGR is? Let's see if there's a couple, in, a couple of hands are going up. An EGR, everyone in ministry, hand went up. <laughs> An EGR is someone that there's extra grace required. <laughs> Dear God, help me. You know what that is? That's iron sharpening iron. Uh, are elders here this morning? I don't see any. Great. Okay, can I have that? Bring that out for me. We're just going to actually, where are those? Big dog, did you? I'll use these. Okay. All right. That's good. I think it's backwards. We're going to put it this way. Okay. Now, I know what you're thinking. I wouldn't dare run a grinder on the stage in our church, right? I would, in fact, run a grinder on the stage. <laughs> Fell out. Let me get that back. This back. I'm just <laughs> fell out again. That's iron sharpening iron. And you know what's interesting is that the axe is actually a little bit warm from me running the grinder on it. Now, if I really want to work with this, those of you that work with your hands, what should I put this in? Vice. Put it in a more new than I expected. Okay, you put it in a vice. <laughs> Show offs. <laughs> it's Father's Day. Everybody's juiced up. A lot of test. Anyway, okay, here we go. What do we put it in? We put it in a vice to secure it and hold it, and then we can work on it. God doesn't put us in a vice, He puts us in community. And there's that rubbing and the sharpening. Some sharpening is from people that are close to you, but some sharpening. Maybe somebody that thinks differently than you or somebody that says something that offends you. And the problem is, I actually let it fall out of the stand several times on purpose. Do you know why? Because that's what we do. When the friction comes and the friction rubs and things get difficult, we're out. Well, I'm gonna go find me another church. Bunch of heathens in that church, they offended me. You probably offended them too. This is a totally different message and Pastor Kim is gonna light it up next week. You wanna be here for next week's message, but I gotta just touch on it. Yes, come on. She gonna kill it. Love when Pastor Kim speaks. We offend people not realizing that they've also offended us or vice versa, and then we get all mad about it, and God calls us to forgive and forbear. That's, that's part of the iron sharpening iron. 
My, my uh, I know you guys probably don't do this, but my daughter did this the other day. She comes in the house all fired up. All, I mean, she's juiced up as can be. And mom! And Jessica's like, what? She's four. She says, Daniel returned evil for evil. <laughs> she's like, what? She's like, I hit him with a stick and he hit me back. <laughs> Zoe, did you hit him with a stick? Yes, I did. <laughs> well, you need to go forgive him, and you both need to apologize. And, but what do we do? We get offended, and whoop, we're gone. We're out. We fall out of the vice because there's been a little bit of friction. When that is what God is trying to use to sharpen us, I'm going to go find the perfect church. I'm just going to tell you there is no perfect church. You can read the New Testament. It's all corrective. All the epistles are corrective because we're broken people in broken relationship. If you do find the perfect church, do that church a favor and don't join it because if you do, it won't be perfect anymore. Amen. But that's what God is calling us to. He's calling us to forgive and forbear and allow the maturing process to take place inside of community. The other thing is, when, when I'm grinding on that, there's little pieces. You know what the sparks are, why it's dangerous? Because there's little sparks, little chunks of metal flying off. And that's what God does, man. He allows the friction to remove the parts of us that aren't supposed to be there and make us sharper and more mature. Relationship is the whole reason this is able to take place. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Before you decide you want to go correcting all of the heathens, because we've talked about accountability within this church, and that's part of the maturing process, the reason we are able to correct people, or the reason we have these conversations is because, I'm sorry, is because of relationship. So let's say someone walks up to you and they say, hey, um, I think you're selfish and self-centered and I don't like who you are. But you don't know who they are. Never met them again in your life. You know, you're like, well, okay, great. How do you feel about lima beans? That means about as much to me. Like, I, who cares? But if somebody in my circle, if Travis McCrory comes and says, hey, Pete, I, I love you. We're in relationship. We're in covenant together. And I've, I've, seen, I've seen this in you, man. And because I love you, that's why I'm coming to you. Don't run around. The, we're talking about sharpening each other. I don't want you to get the wrong impression that you're just going to run around thumping your Bible on people. That's not what God's called us to. What, I'll say it this way. Relationship is what gives us the ability to redirect, redirect rebuke, and realign. Relationship is what gives us the ability to redirect, rebuke, and realign. And I, I would just say... We should be in a position where we welcome those that are close to us to speak into our lives. The last time I spoke, I talked about how we all have a blind spot. I didn't say blind spot. I used a different word. Go back and watch it. I said we all have a... Go back and check it out. We have these blind spots, and we should welcome those that are close to us to speak the truth to us, to help Correct us. We should welcome maturity through accountability. So I'm going to go on vacation in probably a couple of, I'm not going to tell you guys when I'm going on vacation because you'll rob me blind. Some of you will. <laughs> Nick will throw a go-kart party at my house. <laughs> in the next two or three years, I'm going to go on vacation. <laughs> and I'll talk to my neighbors. I'm friends with my neighbors. And I'll say, hey, can you, can you watch my stuff? I can't see it when I'm gone, so just keep an eye on my house, my stuff. You know, how many do this when you go on vacation? Okay, yeah. You can't see it, so you want somebody to watch it for you. We care about our stuff. Who's watching your soul? Who, who's watching your spirit, your heart? You got your stuff or your soul? Let me ask you this. Which is more important? I'll make it even easier for you. 
Which one is eternal? We want to welcome these type of conversations in community. We want to welcome community. We want to welcome accountability. This is what God has called us to. We get to this place where we have to have a difficult conversation with somebody. And if I, if I, if I see something in someone that I, I meant as a brother in Christ, not in judgment, but I see something in them, and I'll tell you, as a, as a pastor, we've seen this from time to time. It's very, very sad. You see a destructive behavior inside of someone. The first thing I'll ask is, who is close to that person? Who loves that person and has a voice into their life? And that's the person that you want to go speak to them. Because here's the deal. In community, content that's controversial becomes conversational. In community, we can share things and we can talk. Some conversations are way better had around a kitchen table than yelled at you from a pulpit. But where a brother can put his arm around you and say, man, I love you. I, I see this in you and I want what's best. We were made for community. And in community, we develop maturity. We develop strength. That's my first point. My second point is this. In your notes, you take a note, it's the, it's the next blank to fill in. Community shapes identity. This is probably the one that I think most of you may struggle with a little bit, if I'm being completely honest, because there's a, a sociological element to this that people meet, miss. People say, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you, all that matters is what you think of yourself. We say this. I've heard this. Uh, parents tell their kids this all the time. You just, it doesn't matter what anybody says. All that matters is how you view yourself. It sounds awesome. The problem is it is sociologically impossible. We develop who we are, what we believe, even see the characteristics of who, who God has built us to be within the context of community. I'll give you an example. So you think you sing like Brian McKnight. Your friends think you sing like a dying goat. You can believe that you are Brian McKnight all you want. I think I sing like Adele. Adele pregnant, like giving, giving birth. Like a, you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not able to shape your own identity outside of community. We discover who we are and what we believe in community. Here's the deal. We also do something completely oblivious. We do things that are, we're oblivious to. One of them is called this. It's called mirroring. We literally, by interacting with people, pick up the mannerisms, tonal qualities in their voice, phraseologies, all as a result of just being in community together. So, what type of community are you putting yourself in? It's shaping you. We, we also believe that God has made you on purpose for a purpose. And he wants you to find that purpose within the context of the local church. I'll take it one step further. God made you on purpose for a purpose. And he wants you to discover that purpose in FCF. In this body, he wants you to discover who and what you are. We want to be the ones to influence each other and shape each other, not the community outside. Look, this is how we see this. In Romans 12, 4, it says, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, verse 6, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Excuse me. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. Verse 7. If it's serving, then serve. Teaching, then teach. Encouraging, then encourage. And so on. God says, I've made you on purpose for a purpose. And within community, your identity will be shaped. So again, I ask, what type of community are you putting yourself in? Now, communities are shaped by what we call a, a value system. You, you can look at people and see what they value based on their community and the community 
is the result of the value system. So when you look at FCF Church, you see a beautiful tapestry of age, socioeconomic class, political background, race. Everybody is different. Because the value system that we ascribe to is the way of Jesus. And that means more to us than anything else. But when we walk outside this room, what environments are we putting ourselves in? What communities are you allowing to shape you? What does Christian community look like? See, Jesus called us to a radical ethic that was so far countercultural. It was a paradox in society. So specific to the local church, what does Christian community look like? Acts 2.42 isn't in my notes, but it's a fantastic verse. It talks about what they did. It says, the early church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. That's what they did, and this is where they did it. Acts 2.46 says, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. You ready? Large group worship in the temple, small group fellowship in their homes. In the temple and in their homes. I think it's a really, really awesome approach to Christian community. And in fact, it is what we ascribe to, not subscribe to, that's a payment, you make payments. Ascribe to here at FCF Church. We want you to be a part of what takes place on a Sunday morning in this room, gathering together for worship. And then I'll just tip my hand. to It's our desire that every single person that calls FCF Church home is involved in a small group or growth group. That's our heart. That's our desire. I probably shouldn't be telling you this either, but like the ice cream... We're tricking you. <laughs> it's a Pavlovian response. Ice cream, ice cream. <laughs> Opening up our bookstore or our, our coffee shop and, and putting tables and areas for you to sit and fellowship. It's a trick. I, I shouldn't tell you this, but <laughs> we're creating environments for you to build community because God said it's not good for us to be alone. And we want to create the environment that's going to shape your community, uh, shape your identity, excuse me. We want to create a community that's going to shape your identity. Every day, they met in the temple and in their homes. My last point is this. I'll close with this. Community creates stability. It helps us to mature. It shapes our identity and it creates stability. Now, this is probably the most acknowledged trait of community. I could ask in this room, how many of you have been through something, a season of your life, a hardship, a challenge, and during that challenge, God sustained you and got you through it, but without the people that were around you, without your community, without your circle, you don't know where you'd be. I, I'm actually going to ask you to raise your hand. If that's you, you'd say, if it wasn't for the community, I don't know where I'd be. And the sad thing is, there's a lot of people that can't raise their hands for that. We'll come back to that in a second. But the stability and support is what God is calling us to. Ephesians 4 says it this way. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. Life, I, this, is, this is a great Father's Day pick-me-up, okay? I apologize in advance. Life is a series of struggles. You're either in the middle of one, coming out of one, or wait for it, getting ready to start one. Do you know what God's solution for struggle is? Community. 
we look at Moses, this incredible man, splits the Red Sea by the power of God. And he still needs Aaron and her to hold his arms up while the battle's fighting, while they're fighting the battle. We all need community. We all need strength and stability. There are, are men that are in my life, three guys that have been in my life for 10 years, one of them for even longer than that. And I could tell you story after story of things that I went through as a pastor, as a father. I remember one night, my, my father flew back from Africa. He landed in New York City, had an outreach that day. He was walking the street, was having trouble breathing. And he's very stubborn. I'm Italian. Italian. I'm, I'm a little stubborn too. I, 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 I'm not stubborn. He's stubborn. I digress. <laughs> Long story short, the person that's running the event takes my dad, puts him in a car, takes him to the hospital, and they find out that he has four blood clots, one in the top of his heart, bouncing up and down in his heart. The pressure inside of his heart was so high they said he wouldn't make the night. And he said, there's not even any point to drive in here. By the time you get here, I, I probably wouldn't be here. And I had to walk on a stage the next morning in front of our church body and lead worship and minister. And if it wasn't for the men that were around me that said, you got this, you can do this, you can get through this, God is gonna sustain you, I don't know where I would be. And my heart breaks for people who have never had that, that you're trying to do this Christian thing alone, and I'm just telling you, you can't. Even if you are seeing success in your life, I would tell you, you are not seeing as much success as you could if you were in God-honoring, healthy community. It's God's support system. Ephesians 4. Verse 9 says that two are better than one. If either of them fall down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Anybody watch Mandalorian? I'm just curious. Any man? I thought y'all would be louder than that. Do you like it or is it terrible? Okay, okay. Listen, this is not the way. This is not the way of Jesus. I read a stat from Barna that said that post-COVID, 40% of people feel alone. And that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you're by yourself. There's people in this room that feel alone. Alone doesn't mean you're by yourself. Uh, alone means you are not known. And this goes all the way back to what we started with. I can't let you see who I really am. So we cover. I, I just, I want to, I want to share something that's, um, I don't mean for this to sound rude or mean, but I feel like it's important to say in the context of this conversation. In order to be known, we got to be real. We gotta stop all this fake garbage. We're putting on a facade. Another phrase that circulated in the church, a guy named Andy Stanley made it really, really popular. He said this. He said, um, people grow in circles, not rows. And I, I totally get, there is a kernel of truth in that. People grow in circles, not rows. He's pushing to small groups. Get to small groups. People grow in circles, not rows. But this is just, this is my little take on this. Whether in a circle or whether you're in a row, if you're not being real, you're not going to grow. We, get, we have to get to the point that we say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to hide. This is who I am, man. I'm... I'm struggling and I want to be known because I pity anyone who falls and has no one to pick them up. We were made for communi community. Father's Day, right? 
I'll tell you this. I struggle with this. I, I want to feel like I have it all together. I don't need anybody. I can do it on my own. You know, I, I, just me and God all the way. Guys, that's just, that's just macho garbage. No, God says we need each other. There's a chance that I'm not the only person that struggles with that. Now, he's calling us to community. He's calling us to community. And in community, we find stability. We value independence. God values interdependence. Come on, people that can come alongside you and create stability. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, actually ask Nick Van Scoy. Are you in here, Nick? There he is. Come on up here. Can you help me welcome Nick? Go ahead. Come on, Nick. Hurry up, man. Just, just take your time. We'll wait. No, I didn't say to show off. You could have walked up the steps. You have to jump up like a, like a knucklehead. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Getting out of control here now. Uh, this is my, say hi, Nick. Love Nick. Great guy. I, you, no microphone, no talking. No, I'm kidding. Um, Nick didn't know what I was speaking on on Sunday. And a lot of you don't know Nick's, Nick's history has passed. Nick was not raised in a Christian home. Um, but, but Nick has gotten plugged in in this community. And we were talking, a couple of us were hanging out after, uh, I guess it was after practice. A group of us, me and another buddy and Nick, were all hanging outside. And Nick, just of his own volition, just shared, you know, I... Guys, I don't know where I would be right now if it wasn't for this church and this community. But I believe that there's people in this room that probably don't have that. And in the context of this message, I just feel like this is right. I've been asked about a hundred times what this key is that I wear around my neck. How many have wondered what this key is that I wear around my neck? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> and I always said I would tell you one day, right? This is a, this is a courage key. This key is, is um, I'm way too emotional. This key is a, um, it's a gift that someone gives to you. Because they see something in you. And it's supposed to unlock the next chapter of your life and how God wants to use you. And in the context of how we view our Christian community, for all intents and purposes, Nick Van Scoy should not be standing here. But there are people who attend this church because he cannot keep his mouth shut about Jesus. I guess a little under two years ago, Nick was taking pictures for us as a part of our photography team. I asked him if I could share the part about him being vulnerable after practice, but I didn't tell him about this. We see something in you, Nick. As a community, we love you, man. We see greatness in you. <laughs> <laughs> we discover you can stay standing I'm landing <laughs> wheels are down maybe even screeching a little bit there's no place to go but down at this point we see and discover who we are within the context of Christian community. So listen, if you're watching online, we love you. We have people that watch all the way from Canada all the way down to Mexico. And we love you. If you're watching online for location reasons, that's fantastic. For health reasons, it's fantastic. But if it's for habit reasons or comfort reasons, 
They come back to church. There's great people here. We're having a blast. This is what God is calling us to. Go get your guitar. I'm going to have you sing a little bit with Jesse, all right? <laughs> Standing. We got to do something about the hair, too. I don't know about that. I'm, <laughs> I'm just jealous. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I pray that in the context of community, we would become all that you've called us to be. God, we wouldn't forsake the meeting together as some are in the habit of doing we would spur one another on. God, we would push each other. We would grow in the context of community and we would see maturity develop, character develop, our identity develop, and we would find stability, God, in your church. In Jesus' name, everyone said? Amen. Amen. Now listen to me real quick. Before we go, before we go, we're going to sing something real quick here. Now your action item for this message is this. Look, I... Some of you aren't involved in a small group because you're like, look, I tried, I went to a small group, those people were weird. I'll be honest with you, we got weird small groups. I'm a part of one of them, it's fine. If you haven't found a small group that you feel like you should be a part of, you know what that probably means? God wants you to start one. Come on. So. In your program, you can check that box. It says, I'd like to start a group. You can go to the connection card. You can do it online. If you're watching online, we have a lot of people on vacation. There's a great crowd here this morning. You, you can do that. Join. Be a, this is your action item. Come to church. Be a part of a small group. We're going to sing a song that's become an anthem for us here this year at FCF. He's calling you to be available. He's calling you to step into all that he has. And for some of you, that might mean getting outside of your comfort zone. That's okay. That's okay. You can be known. Amen? Come on, let's this together. Father God, that we would be available, God, to start groups, God, to lead people, to connect people to you in Christ. In Jesus' name. Come on, sing this with me. Father God, now as the road must follow the spirit. Yes. Broken as my life may be, I will give you every piece. I You know, you have all kinds of special moments in church, but those are the moments. That's special. That's really special, isn't it? So thank you, Pastor Pete. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. Our church is about 30 years old, and um, I've been with it the whole ride, and this is the most beautiful community that he's building, and I'm just so glad to be a part of it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. If today was your first time at FCF, um, thanks for being here. Um, we would love to meet you personally. Pastor Pete's going to make his way over there to Guest Central. He'd love to say hi and meet you, shake your hand. And if you need to talk or pray with anyone today, we have some wonderful folks over in Care Central. Happy Father's Day. Go hug a dad. Take care, everyone.